Once in a while, I come across a decent digital music player that's a pleasure to use. This is the Finistech ZX6 Pro NXP. However, the ad copy also calls it a DSD-512, so forgive me if I use these terms interchangeably. I don't know for sure, but I suspect this is another Android-based device, simply because it supports the same button layout that other Android devices have used. The model is DSD-512, and I believe that refers to the maximum capacity of the SD card. However, that's aspirational because it ships with a 64 gigabyte card. In addition to the TF card slot, we have the USB-C charging port, volume up and down, and then on the top we have the power button. This is the line out and this is the headphone jack. However, I've used them both for headphones and they work just fine. Neither this side nor the bottom have any ports or buttons and the back simply has the logo. The case seems to be machined aluminum. I don't know that for sure, It just, but it feels like a quality product. The screen is very nice. The top of the screen is simply a display. The bottom is a touch screen. Many of the Android-based music players I've tried in the past have been very sluggish. This one seems to be fairly well-powered and responsive to button presses. The menuing system, for the most part, is fairly intuitive. My biggest complaint is that my eyes are almost 57 years old, and I cannot read red on light gray background, which really makes the selected item difficult for me to read. Normally, I have to navigate away from it just to read what it says and then go back to it. Now, my daughter is 17 years old. She says it's perfectly clear, but my daughter is not interested in dedicated media players and my daughter doesn't have a job. So who's your target market? This is just a usability issue that could be fixed with a firmware upgrade. Say you put a yellow outline around the selected item or highlight the icon rather than the entire text. That would fit, either one of those would fix that. The first challenge was to get music onto the DSD-512. I had hoped that the included USB-C cable would allow me to attach this to my Mac and just drag and drop files as if this were a portable drive. But no, that did not work. I had to eject the TF card, insert that into a card reader in my Mac, and then drag and drop files, and then put the card back in. And then once you do that, you hit rescan, and it will re-index the songs. So it wasn't the, <laughs> it wasn't a big deal. It just wasn't what I'd wanted. And as far as using iTunes or whatever to manage your music library, forget it. This does have a nice equalizer that comes with the standard presets, as well as allowing you to define your own. This allows you what you would like displayed while the music is playing. I believe out of the box it's track info, but that text is way too small to be useful to me. So I prefer the album art, and I like the album art anyway. And then you can also display the lyrics. What I would really like is if you could make the font size larger so that the track info is actually useful to me. This is one of my favorite features, and I actually consider it required for any media player, and that's the ability to shuffle all my tracks. This menu option, I don't understand at all. Hearing mode, what is that supposed to mean? And this manual is no help. It's friendly, but it doesn't tell you much. This supports the ability to balance your left and right channels, which I'm not sure why I would do this unless I was setting this to a receiver where I'm closer to one speaker than the other, or I had really terrible headphones. I don't know, but it's there. The DSD-512 has many configuration options. One of them that I changed was the timeout on the screen. Now, I like the screen, maybe not to be on all the time, but a lot of the time I like looking at the screen. I like, I've changed tracks quite a bit, or I like to look at the album art, or see what track it is that I'm hearing, or whatever. But even worse than the timeout on the screen was the timeout on the buttons. I think that was set to like one second or three seconds of inactivity or, or something like that. But in any case, if you don't continually press the buttons, they go dim and then uh, well, they'll continue to work, but you just have to kind of guess where they are. And once you do guess, they'll pop back up again. 
or you can hit the power button and then hit it again. Now that won't stop music playback, but that will reactivate all the screens and then you can use the buttons again. But I just increase the timeout on the buttons. Yes, it affects power life, but I think it's a usability issue and I'm willing to make that sacrifice. The DSD 512 supports all the major lossless formats and 64-bit tracks at 768 kilohertz. I don't think I have anything that high, but it's nice to know it's there. It says that you can use the ZX6 Pro NXP as a DAC for a PC. However, I have a Mac, so that doesn't do me any good. Um, you could also use this as a DAC on your phone, but um, I'm, I'm not going to do that either. One thing I couldn't get to work were my Bluetooth earbuds. I use Ultimate Ears. They should work. They work on every other device. They didn't even appear in my list. I enabled every protocol that was available on this device. Just couldn't get it to work. However, I could pair it to my Bluetooth receiver. So I, I know a Bluetooth works at least to some degree. In the ad copy, they say they have excellent customer service. And if you have any ideas to improve the ZX6 Pro, let them know and they will modify the software. All right, game on. I will contact them. The ZX6 Pro does not ship with any headphones, and I'm grateful for that. Most of the time, bundled headphones are awful. So I've been listening to this with my Sendy Audio Planar headphones. They are 32 ohm, which is not a problem for the ZX6 Pro. This has volume to spare. I, I have not cranked this up as loud as it goes. The ZX6 Pro ships with a 1500 milliamp hour battery. At most, you're going to get 12 hours of playback out of this thing. The way I abuse it with leaving the screen on all the time, I'll be lucky to get eight hours. And um, I, th I, I still think that's probably enough, but it depends upon your use case. What's enough for you? Like I said, my main issue with the ZX6 Pro is not the hardware. It's the menuing system. Make the font bigger. Make the selected item more readable. Change the firmware to include those features, and I would give it a 5 out of 5 at this price point. As it is, I'll give it a 4 out of 5. Thanks for stopping by.